Hey guys, Mr. again for another video today, and we are back with our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode, and we are one win off of 40 wins. We are at the deadline, and we are atop of our division as well. We are at the top of the Central, so just off screen a few moments ago, I was uh, browsing the trade block really quickly, and I want to show you something very, very interesting, and boy... Am I ever glad that I traded Dustin Bufflin down to an 80 overall <laughs> with 7.6 mil left on the contract? I mean, obviously, definitely uh, not necessarily a bad defenseman, but uh, yeah, 7.6 mil at an 80 overall is not worth it whatsoever. Obviously, is on the last year of his deal, but uh, I must say, I think uh, trading away Dustin Bufflin definitely helped us in the long run so it is now time to uh to continue the sim and to finish this season off hopefully we'll continue to sim as well as we have been but uh i'm just gonna sim to the end of the season boy i just said sim like six times in a matter of 20 seconds so uh immediately in the episode we won our first game of the episode which uh gave us the 40th win of the season as we lose Essa Lindell to an injury, and man, our entire team is almost in the greens, and to be honest, that kind of sucks. That's kind of scary, because actually, no, that's fine. I mean, if Wilson and Patan want to stay listed as depth forwards and or only go to fourth line forwards with stay in the green, that is fine. Now, Byron, I don't even care. He's such a great player for us. Perot's in the green. Leopold is up to a third liner, so that is interesting. Dano's in the green, and obviously our top six is in the green as well. Marner, I think, is down overall. Yeah, he has been complaining, which is not good. That's for sure. Defensively, obviously, we have a full top six of green player, or of green, or of greens, I should say. And both our goaltenders are in the green as well. So, a uh, little minor injury to Lindell. But uh, let's continue the sim. We had a three-game losing streak, but we did get two points during that losing streak as well. So Lindell should be good now for the Calgary game. Let's put him back in to uh, the lineup. Obviously, he's actually a pretty solid defenseman. I mean, listed as a two-way, he's obviously pretty decent. He can play offense. He's definitely not the best offensively or defensively, but that gives him that two-way role. And I think, personally, I think he's just a really good uh, six, sixth, sixth liner. <laughs> I was gonna say sixth defenseman. Wow. Mark Mathod has a 3.54 mil cap hit for the next two years, and he is a 73 overall. Calgary, you better hope he freaking retires. That is a disgusting contract, and we have already qualified for the playoffs by uh by that Winnipeg or by not the Winnipeg game by the uh, Nashville game, March like 16th. We clinched. And looking like we could even have a 50-win season here. I think we still have around 8 or 9 games left. And uh, let's see. If we can hit 50 wins, boy, will I ever be happy. That's for sure. Obviously, only time will tell. Ah, oh, we scouted forwards. I don't want to scout forwards. I'm going to stop the sim really quickly. I do want to make sure I scout defensemen in the queue and not forwards. My bad. <laughs> Let's let's go back though. Let's see. Can we change this? We are still first in the division with 102 points. Looking like maybe we have five teams from the Central make the playoffs as well. So that would be interesting. So scouting. Let's uh, let's edit the scouting assignment once again. Q defenseman for three weeks. That's what I wanted to do. All right. We should be good now. And uh, I guess we'll just finish off the sim. So far, progressing pretty fast through this episode, which is good. I mean, this may be a bit of a shorter one, but, uh, I mean, really, there's not much I can do about that. I am going to show you the stats, though, which I'm sure that will drag it on. So, let's see. We've got seven games left, and uh, we could definitely get 50 wins. I mean, it's a possibility. Can we, though? That is the thing. 48 wins. All right. Now, against St. Louis, we lose. We win against San Jose. 49 wins. Edmonton, nope, and we win over Anaheim to get our 50th win of the season, and we close out the season with an 8-3 victory, and we face the Dallas Stars in the first round. All right, interesting. Let's check some things out really quickly. So, 
did we clinch the conference? That would be interesting. I think we definitely could have. I can't see it from here yet. Let's check off the playoff tree, though. We've got, uh, uh, let's see, let's go back to the Western Conference. We have, okay, stop changing. We have Anaheim versus St. Louis and Edmonton versus Calgary, Battle of Alberta. Then we got Winnipeg versus Dallas and then Minnesota versus Nashville, all right? In the Eastern Conference, we have Tampa versus Columbus, Toronto versus Montreal, uh, the Washington Capitals versus the Boston Bruins, and Philadelphia versus the New Jersey Devils. Wow, the Pens did not make the playoffs. I wonder if they were close. That is very interesting. Um, all right, well, let's see. Mark Shifley had a hell of a good season. 77 points to his name, almost had a 30 goal season, and fuck, Line A sucks. He just does, he just sucks. He just doesn't score. I mean, how does he not get more points with that shot, with the puck skills he has? I don't, I don't understand. Did I not give him enough money? Like, for God's sake, Drew Doughty with 52 points. Kyle Connor with 52 points, which isn't too bad. Mitch Miner's down to an 85. Oh, my. I don't know why you're complaining. I mean, you sh ah, there's no way you're complaining about ice time. I know I'm giving you enough ice time to not complain. Pugliarvi, 40 points. Brody, 38 points. I mean, if Marner would have just done better, then he, sh he wouldn't have been complaining. I mean... There's not much I can do. I'm sorry. Uh, Line A, though, I'm, I'm really disappointed with him. He didn't even get 30 goals. He didn't have the most goals on the team, as he realistically should. Ehlers had a good season, though. That is for sure. I think that is a career high for him. Yeah, it definitely is. So that is good. Now, let's go back to Shifley. Is that a career high for Shifley? Uh, no, it is not. All right. So although it is one of his best seasons, arguably his second best season, Actually, he improved by just a little bit than last year, so that's interesting. Uh, but I, I still, I'm quite upset with s some of our players, like Pugliarvi, I mean, eh. Marner, upset with. Connor, upset with. Well, actually, no. Connor, you know what? I'll give him a break. Line, though, disappointed. I really think he should be getting more points than 53 in 82 games. It's not like he missed 20 games. It's just 53 points in 82 games suck. Uh, Drew Doughty as well, I mean, 52 points obviously isn't bad, but, uh, I mean, that's not necessarily Norris contention, as, you know, realistically you would think he would get, but uh, whatever, it's fine, though, we, 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 for the lack of offense from Marner and Line, I think uh, our depth players really helped out there, obviously Perot had 32 points, which is really good, uh, Leopold at 28, Byron at 24, uh, Montour did pretty good on that third pair with 22. Dano did good. Batan, Wilson, Morrissey, Lindell. Forsling even uh, added to the offense while, when he was playing. So, you know what? I mean, there's not much to complain about. 40 wins for Cam Talbot with a 924 save percentage. And Eric Comrie is a phenomenal backup. Holy frig. Let's go check the entire league. Let's check goalies. Most wins. Wow, Vasilevsky had 46 wins, and he played less games than Talbot. Oh, no, sorry. He played the same amount of games as Talbot. Wow. All right. Best save percentage. Holy shit. I saw that. Yeah, Carey Price. Almost a 940 save percentage in 60 games. Well, Carey Price is most definitely winning the Vesna this year with a 939 save percentage and a 1.92 GAA. Holy shit. Those are the best stats I've ever seen in one of my sims. That is crazy. Eric Comrie technically was the second best goalie in the league. Uh, maybe even best, but obviously he's a backup, uh, statistical-wise at least. Although, let's see, where was uh, Cam Talbot? Cam Talbot didn't have uh, the worst season. He did pretty good, so happy about that, that's for sure. But <laughs> that is quite something. Most wins to Vasilevsky. Let's go check. All skaters, let's see who had the most points. It was Steven Stamkos. All right, 92 points for him. Nobody hit 100 points this season. All right, interesting. Kucherov with 89, Tarasenko with 88, Ovechkin with 85, and Tavares with 82. Only five point per game players this year. Interesting. Most goals, I'm assuming Ovechkin, yeah. 57 goals, holy. Hey, he's on the last year of his deal, too. 
Hey, interesting. 57 goals for Alex Ovechkin. Jesus Christ. What a freaking beast. Let's see. I mean, 64, 54, 53, and 57 in this sim. That is absolutely ridiculous from him. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, um, Casey Middlestat with 44 goals. Wow, he was a beast. What? Wow. I mean, 83 slap shot accuracy and 83 slap shot power is not very good. I mean, 90 wrist shot accuracy is really good, but holy shit. Why did he score so many goals? What the hell? <laughs> uh, Stamkos had 43. Tarasenko had 47. Colin White had 41. Uh, Bergeron had 36. Wow, really good season for him. 81 overall. Bergeron. Kadri with another 30 goal season. Keller with a 30 goal season. Nita Ryder and Drouin with 30 goal seasons. Larkin had a 30 goal season as well, up to an 89. Interesting. Most assists. Backstrom. Yeah, Backstrom and Kucherov. All right. And let's go check defensemen now. Uh, Oscar Clefbaum. Could uh, could win the Norris this year with 74 points. Wow. Uh, Morgan Riley with 71. Eric Carlson with 70. Fowler with 69. Petrangelo and Theodore with 66. Theodore's up to an 86. He is actually looking really, really good for Vegas. That is interesting. What kind of contract is he on? A phenomenal contract. Wow. He was tied for top five in or defenseman for points in the league. Not even getting paid two and a half million. Obviously, last year of his deal, but still, Tory Krug had 64 points. He is playing on Tampa as well. Interesting. Andy Hoffman. Uh, I'm gonna assume a rookie. Yeah, I'm assuming that's a rookie. Another uh, offense or another defenseman went first overall to Florida in this sim. Interesting. Uh, where was Doughty? Doughty had 52 points. Obviously. Not phenomenal. He did have 18 goals, though. So, you know what? That's not too bad. Kale McCarr and Brent Burns with 22 goals each. Interesting. Well, Kale McCarr has a ridiculous slap shot. 89 slap shot accuracy. Almost as good as Carlson's. Jesus. All right. Well, uh, let's go check the rookie skaters then. Uh, Frederick Biggs. First overall in 2020. All right. Wow. He looks like a freaking beast. Eric Branstrom. Uh, was a rookie this year as well. He has 99 offensive awareness. What the fuck? Oh, oh my god. Holy frig, what a beast. 58 points and 58 points in the AHL, then 45 in his rookie season. Holy frig. I, I wonder if he was playing with uh, with Theodore. Maybe that's why Theodore had so many points. Matthew Barzil, a rookie. He's injured right now. He could have maybe gotten up there a little bit more. Nick Merkley, uh, Samuel Gerrard, Owen Tippett. Wow. Frederick Biggs. Oh, my God. Rookie goalies. Let's see. Uh, Tristan Jari, or Yari, was a rookie goalie this year, 25 years old. Let's see. Most wins for a rookie was Nadelkovich. Oh, no, Carter Hart. Well, Carter Hart must be the starter. Well, I would assume so over there in Philadelphia now. I mean, he didn't do too great. Nadelkovich. Hey, Comrie actually was a really good rookie goaltender this year. And you know what? So, I mean, Comrie maybe in in the in the talks of getting a Calder. I mean, he didn't really play that many games, but I would assume it would go to uh, Frederick Biggs. Now, out of curiosity, let's go to Toronto. Let's see uh, who was playing on the top line for uh for forwards so william nylander first line right wing uh austin matthews first line center i would assume now i wonder is jvr on that top line or is biggs on that top line i mean either way i mean Kadri had a better season than matthews and biggs had a really good season so maybe uh i don't know yannick hansen is a toronto maple leaf as well wow Frederick Biggs, 2020 overall first round or first overall pick, and then Austin Matthews. Four years later, they get another first overall pick. That is crazy. I think I might switch Biggs to a left wing just so Biggs does get to play on that top line. Uh, you know, I'll do it at the end of the season if I remember. Um, I'm gonna write it down. Biggs on Toronto, and yeah, all right. So 
Let's now check out the league and we'll see. So we actually clinched the Western Conference with 111 points. Minnesota and Nashville also had 100 points. St. Louis and Dallas also made the playoffs in the Central. So we have five teams going to the playoffs in the Central Division. Let's see. Obviously, we were first. Anaheim wasn't too far behind us, but uh, we just had a better season. We had more regulation plus overtime wins anyways. Anaheim with 107. Oilers with 101. The Wild with 100, Preds with 100, Blues and Flames with 92, and Stars with 87. While the Blackhawks or Canucks could have made it. I mean, really, it, the only reason why they didn't is because of regulation plus overtime wins. So, while they had an identical record, it's just uh, it's just Dallas had that one more overtime win or, regu- or overtime or regulation win. Now, moment of truth. Did we win the President's Trophy? We did not. All right. Tampa Bay, the best team in the league, even though Toronto had 54 wins. They only lost in overtime once, though. 109 points for them. Caps also had 109 points. But, yeah, we finished second in the in the league, which isn't bad. We clinched the conference. Let's see. How do we do? Uh, goals against per game, a 2.1. Holy shit. How do we even lose games, boys? What the hell? That is amazing. What the shit? Is that the least amount of goals against as well? It must be. Yeah, it is. Goals four per game. How well did we do? Uh, We were top ten. Oh, God. We actually were, like, kind of middle of the league. That's the reason why we lost a a lot of games. We definitely could have done better if we had more offense. Like, if Mitch Marner had done better this season... Could you imagine? That's another thing. I forgot that Mitch Marner isn't even on Toronto anymore, but wow. Yeah, Toronto did absolutely incredible. A 3.23 goals for game or goals for per game. They also had the most goals per game uh, throughout the entire league. Best power play percentage, 25.8% for the St. Louis Blues. We didn't have too bad of a percentage, 20.6 uh, overall. Higher half of the league. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to penalty kill percentage. Uh, again, a little like same, literally the same spot, but uh, eighty-one point nine percent overall. I mean, that's not a bad. Uh, that's not a bad uh, penalty kill percentage, anyways. Best home record in the NHL was the Edmonton Oilers with twenty-seven wins there. We uh, didn't do too bad at home, 24, 12, and 5, but uh, we really excelled on the road. We were top four or fourth in the league on the road, 27, 10, and 4. All right, interesting. Last 10, I mean, uh, not too bad of a last 10. 6, 3, and 1 is okay. But uh, yeah, so those are all the NHL stats. Now I think let's check some AHL stats really quickly, and then we'll. Uh, we I'll probably end the episode there. Did our AHL team make the playoffs, though? Not looking like it. Uh, I'm assuming they did not. Let's see. Uh, no, they did not. But Jansen Harkins had a really, really good season. Almost a point-per-game player from him. That is really nice to see. Wow. Our record was abysmal. How did he have so many points? Uh, 77 points for Jansen Harkins. Then 69 for Roslovic. 68 for spot check wow all right um interesting let's see who was our goaltender this year grow and henton and they both sucked if we had had a better goalie definitely could have made the playoffs um but yeah jansen harkins had a phenomenal season let's go check the entire league see where he was in the entire league uh wow okay nicholas hansen a 90-point player, then William Cargulo, 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 Gar, I have no idea, 38, oh my, K. Okay, wait, holy shit, Nicholas Hansen, okay, I didn't even realize, he had 87 assists, what the fuck, he had 87 assists, oh my god, <laughs> holy frig, Jansen Harkins is like tied top 10, wow, all right, yeah, and Karosten, uh, 83 points. Le- or Taylor Lea or Lear, 82 points. Reed Duke with 82 points. He's NHL ready. 
Uh, Rodney Humphreys with 80. Rasmus Asplund, Tyler Bertuzzi, Glenn Godden, uh, Craig Zinger, and then Jansen Arkins. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, yeah. Uh, Harkins was tied for top 9 in the league point-wise. Very interesting. Overall, a pretty good season from the Jets. Now, I do want to apologize, guys. Obviously, I mainly just spent this entire episode looking at stats, but uh, I'm sorry. That's just kind of how everything went. I mean, you know what? Why not? Let's check uh, Dallas's record. Or not record. Sorry. Let's check out their team really quickly and uh we'll also be able to see uh drew doughty and all of his glory being our best player wow they have really good stats 93 offense 95 defense 85 goaltending to our 96 offense 95 defense and 94 goaltending well i mean we have it on paper we have the advantage offensively defensively seems to be the same i mean i i find it really hard to believe that but uh Seems to be the same, and apparently we have the uh, the uh, advantage in net as well. So let's go check our opponents. View opponents. All right, top line of Jamie Benn with Tyler Sagan and Alex Radulov. Very good first line. Second line of Jason Dickinson with Roop, Roop Heinz, and Dennis Garyanov. A very good second line. And a third line of Matthias Yanmark with Martin Hansel and Brett Ritchie. Good third line and a fourth line of Jason Spezza, Devin Shore, and Drew Stafford. All right, Drew Stafford. Uh oh, a former Jet. That could be bad. Uh, oh wow, their defense is actually a lot better than what I thought it was. Eighty-six overall, Julius Honka or Honkinen. I was gonna say Honkinen for some reason. Julius Honka. He has a wicked shot. How many goals did he score? Fourteen goals. That's it. He has a wicked shot. Oh my. Really good defensive stats as well. Okay, interesting with uh, John Klingberg. Obviously a really good defenseman. How old did he do? 51 points, not too bad. 87 overall, a second pair of Miro Heiskin, and he's starting to get it into uh, into the groove of th things. Obviously drafted third overall three or four years ago now in the sim. 925 mil, and he is still on the entry-level deal. That is very good. 84 overall. He is playing with Carl Gunnarsson, which uh, definitely kind of drops off. Then Jamie Alexiak and Steven John. So, I mean, realistically, I would say our defense is better than Brent. Brent? I was going to say Brent. What the shit? Ben Bishop, an 83 overall goalie. He is not doing great by the looks of it. And then a backup of Daniel Polzel, who is a 66 overall. That is not good. Do they have any injured players? Radic Faxa? No, 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 no injured players. Just Michael Stone scratch, later Quack Quack scratch, and Radic Faxa is scratch. So, I mean, really quickly, let's go back to the defense. Let's see. We've got 86, 87, 84, 81, 79, 79. I know our third pairing's better. I'm, I, uh, well, okay, wait, let's go back. Let's, uh, let's press B. Our top pair is better, our second pair is better, and our third pair is better. How we have the same overall defense doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, I dragged this episode on way too long at this point. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you all did enjoy, and uh, we'll be back in the next episode in the playoffs. I will see you guys then. Goodbye.